हेलो एवरी वन टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डू क्लास नाइन मैथ्स पार्ट टू चैप्टर नंबर फिफ्थ क्वारी लैटरल प्रैक्टिस सेट नंबर फाइव पॉइंट फाइव क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री एंड फोर वी आर गोइंग टू सॉल्व टूडे द अदर क्वेश्चन दैट इज क्वेश्चन वन एंड टू वी डेड येस्टडे सो लेट स्टार्ट विथ क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री टूडे इन द फिगर ए बी सी इज अ इक्वी लैटरल ट्राइंगल मीन्स ऑल द साइड्स आर सेम ओके ऑफ एन इक्वी लैटरल ट्राइंगल पॉइंट एफ D E are the midpoints. These are the midpoints. Okay, side A B midpoint is F. Side A C midpoint is F. Side C midpoint is E. Side D E midpoint is F. Side D E midpoint is E. Side D E midpoint is F. 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 Side D E midpoint is triangle okay so how are we going to write the solution i hope you all have understood what is been given and what is to be found okay it's very easy we have to use midpoint theorem over here so the solution is going to be in triangle abc f and e are the midpoints of sides ab and ac okay same reason same solution we had done for question number 1 also the same we have to solve for this question the only difference is that was just a triangle this is an equilateral triangle okay but the method of solving is the same of question 1 and question number 3 okay so from this statement we are going to get fe is equal to half of bc okay so what we have stated is fe is equal to half of bc okay so this is going to be half of this length okay and from where did we get this statement this is midpoint theorem okay let's keep this the first reason now the second we will find that is in triangle abc d and e are the midpoints of sides bc and ac okay see this was the first this is the second now in this we took d and e that means this is going to be half of ab ac and bc okay so that is what we have to prove in the midpoint theorem using the midpoint theorem that is de this is going to be half of ab okay this is going to be half of ab the same reason midpoint theorem you will see that the method of solving is same okay so when we took this line when we took this segment we used half of this segment got it when we when we have taken this we are using half of this segment got it now the remaining is this one so for this we are going to use this segment okay this is going to be the third that is again in triangle a b c d and f are the midpoints okay of which sides of sides b c and a b therefore from this statement what we are going to get that is df is equal to half of ac as i have shown you just now explained you midpoint theorem okay so we have got the three reasons for all the three sides oh sorry so we have got the three reasons for all the three sides children okay the same way i have written for first second and the third the method of solving is same now it it will be very easy for us to write when the conclusion comes that is why we have marked this as first this is the second and this is going to be a third reason okay so in triangle abc is a equilateral that is also been given no? that we have to use it now that is bc is equal to ab is equal to ac 
okay all the sides of this triangle are going to be same because it's an equilateral triangle and the property of equilateral triangle is all the sides are same so sides of an equilateral triangle got it children so when we multiply each with half we are going to get when we multiply this with half of bc okay from the first statement we will take this then we will take this then we will take this okay that means using these two is equal to half of ab is equal to half of ac okay so from where did we get this children we got this from first second and the third conclusion okay so half of ab is how much fe half of ab is going to be de and half of ac is going to be df okay so from where did we get this from one two and third reason okay that means if these sides are equal that means def is an equilateral triangle got it children wasn't it easy let's do the last sum that is the fourth sum the first we will get explained with the diagram in the figure segment p d is the median median of which triangle children this greater triangle okay this is going to be the median of triangle pqr point t now point t i haven't marked it so this is point t is the midpoint of pd okay so pd is this line and t is supposed to be its midpoint okay qt produces intersects pr at m okay so this is going to be a intersecting point m okay so we have to show that pm and pr is equal to 1/3 okay so we have to prove this segment as it is 1/3 of its value okay so for this one trick that we can take is we have to do the construction over here we have to draw a construction in this way okay this is going to be the intersecting point that we will name it as n okay so the solution is construction first we will write which i have already drawn that is draw segment dn parallel to segment qm such that such that n is between m and r okay this is between m and r got it so we have to draw this construction why we have taken it you will understand it later on so after writing this construction we will start with the proof because we need to prove it isn't it they have showed us so a we will take p d n p d n n we will take this triangle now just a moment we will take this triangle now you all can refer the diagram it's been given in the textbook also children so p d n t is the midpoint okay so that means of segment which segment pd this is given okay so therefore line tm is going to be parallel to side dn okay with the construction now see if t is the midpoint of pd then line tn is parallel to dn isn't it this line is going to be parallel to this line this segment sorry okay so this was our construction whatever was been given we have written it so from where did we get these two reason children we got this from or we can write it by converse of midpoint i have explained the midpoint theorem and the converse in the previous video also the link will be provided over there you all can refer it 
okay so now we have come to the point that we have to use a converse of midpoint theorem over here okay so m is the midpoint which is given in the question midpoint of width segment pm okay m is the midpoint of pn and n is the midpoint of mr so don't get confused with those points therefore pm is equal to mn pm is equal to mn by midpoint theorem okay so in in triangle now we have to use the other triangle that is going to be q r and m you all can refer the diagram children accordingly as i am speaking so d is the midpoint over there okay midpoint of which segment q r got it so from this we can write it is been given in the question itself this statement is given in the question okay so line dn is going to be parallel the same reason parallel to side qm with construction you will see that the same thing is been repeated again the same steps but two different triangles by see again i have taken two reasons and by converse of midpoint theorem okay you will see that in the first statement itself we had taken this triangle and given two reason by midpoint theorem for the second reason also we did the same thing we took this triangle gave two reasons by converse of midpoint theorem this is important why so that we can state that n is the midpoint of segment mr okay therefore now how to write in the statement mr is equal to nr therefore let's keep this reason as the second one and the first one was supposed to be this one okay i forgot to mention it this was the first reason this was the second reason so we need to combine the first and the second in order to get pm is equal to m n is equal to n r okay so i have used these two statements and i have got this from 1 and 2 got it so this and this gave me this statement that means that means pr is equal to pm plus mn sorry mn plus nr okay where m is between m and n is between r p and r these two segments are between p and r got it you will see the big state uh, big segment pr you will be able to see we have pm mn and nr okay in the diagram and then from this statement we have got pr is equal to 1 2 and 3 pn because pn is equal to nr nr is equal to pm that is what we have written okay so this is going to be 1 pm 2 pm 3 pm so we have taken 3 pm because we have stated this reason all these are equal to 1 okay so pm is equal to 3 therefore p m upon p r is going to be 1 upon 3 when we interchange its place we are going to get we are going to get this thing okay when we take pr over here and 3 we will move to the left hand side so the question that we had asked was to prove that pm is equal to pr pm upon pr is equal to 1/3 so that is been proved okay so i will show you from where did we get p r c this thing is been proved that it was equal to this line this line is equal to this line 
means all these three lines are equal these three segments are going to be equal okay so instead of writing pm plus nr plus nr we have, we have to write it 3 three, 3 pm got it that means pr this is the second this is the line pr m was over here n was over here so pr is equal to 3 of pm because all these segments are congruent okay i hope you all have understood this section of the video children if there is any queries please mention in the comment section i will try to answer your queries see you in the next video take care bye